In this video, we'll cover the basic use and understanding of the proximal link calculator. Uh, quick note, the proximal link calculator supports the following Tsunami products. Uh, we have the QBMP-10100 series, the QBMP-10100L uh, Delight series, the QBMP-10100S series, the MP-10250 uh, BSX, uh, the XP-10100 series, uh, QBMP8200 series and uh, QBMP800 series. Okay, so uh, now we got the disclaimer finished. Let's go ahead and take a look at the calculator itself. All right, so to the left we have project report and quick project. Uh, it's something I'm going to cover later on. Okay, and over here what we have is a little internet available. There's no internet, and it's going to tell you. Uh, this is again our disclaimer. This is the version number. Okay, so up next we have our settings. Okay, so what we have here in the settings, we have import uh, header and import footer. And so um, you could create um, Excel uh, spreadsheets. So you save them when you do the final report. Basically what this is, it, it adds a footer and a header to, uh, to the Excel. It has to be a PNG file. So what we do is we initially, we provide them. So if you click on footer, uh, it's going to be in program, uh, proximal wireless link calculator, and you can see here is the footer and here's the header. Uh, just click on that. Okay, this is a footer, and it's going to say successful. Right, and I'm going to show later on uh, when you ex uh, save the report as a Excel spreadsheet, you could see what it what it looks like. Okay, over here we have uh, import database. So the import database is, um, let's say we introduce a new product after the calculator is released. Uh, different specs and things like that. So we're going to release a new database on the uh, support the proxim. So you just download the database, click here, and then uh, you'll be able to just uh, upload the database and then you're, you're done. All right, next is import accessories. So what that is, is it's also an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's when you are a um, using a third-party antennas, cables, and so on. We actually have an example on the on Spot the Proxim site when you download the calculator. Um, again, if you're using different cables, different antennas, and so on, uh, and you're not, you're not using our generic ones. And, of course, language, and we have... Uh, English, uh, Chinese, Cantonese, uh, Spanish, and French. When you select with each one, uh, everything turns into that said language. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and create a new uh, calculator a report. All right, so to do so, we're just going to click on project, and we're going to go ahead and uh, click new project. Uh, we could also create project from Excel, uh, which is something that is covered later on. All right, so we're going to do new project, right, and let's just say we're just going to select the one we have right now. We're just going to overwrite it. Uh, we're going to click on report, and we're going to do new report. Uh, Excel and KML, those are covered later on. Okay, so this is what it looks like so at the beginning we're just going to start with the name all right so this is just going to be just the name right, of our report all right we have the units right, which is going to be uh, metric either meters or kilometers or imperial feet and miles we have our uh, coordinates which could be either in decimal or in degrees we have our regulatory domain, all right, so in this case, we'll just do FCC, okay. We have our band, all right, so you can kind of see we have, um, obviously, depending on the radio, but uh, we have our band, so let's just say we just do 5.2. We have our channel size, 20, 40, and 80, okay. 
Okay, so we we'll just do 20. All right, so this is a point, two points, so it's going to be a quick bridge. Over here you have a skew, so just basically the model number of what we're doing. Uh, you kind of see, kind of goes down, and we cover uh, the 10,000 series, the 8200 series, the 835, the 825. Okay. Um, also, you can see here for uh, for the quick bridge 10150 because they have built-in antennas. You can see the antenna gain can't do anything because it's already built in. But if we do a QB 10100, you can see that you have the option to select. Uh, whatever antenna you want or if it's not listed you could go and type here and then just type in the antenna gain All right, so in our test we're just going to do a, uh, a 10150 LNK okay now the throughput uh, the throughput is what what we hopefully like this is so you could see where 20 megahertz the max is going to be 150 if we go to 40 it changes to 350 and we go to 80 it changes to 700 so in our case let's just go ahead and select 40 and we want 250 max okay so then we just do calculate okay so after it's calculated it's going to take us to uh, well our graph okay so this right here just kind of gives us a quick throughput overlay if you will okay this is just the information that we put okay this is the required throughput up here in the green line uh, this would be if you would have different types of antennas uh, 15 dbi will give us this here's ours 22 and then if you had a 28 dbi so uh, it's just throughput in megs right here and then you have miles so like you kind of see this is us right here if you go kind of hover over here you could see at 18 miles we get about uh, 26 megs at 19 miles about 26 and then you could kind of see drops down if we go here at nine miles we're seeing about 130 so uh, this is just a, a quick view to let you know what we um, what the radio should see throughput wise okay now we click on map Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, the map itself. All right, so over here we have either map of satellite. So we could have satellite with labels, without labels. We have map um, with labels. So you could see the kind of terrain. So in this case, we're just going to do satellite with, um, with labels. All right. We have a search box. So I'll cover the search box here uh, in a minute. Okay, we have a color selector. Right? So the color selector is uh, kind of interesting because once we have multiple uh, multiple links, what you could do is you could color code each particular link to whatever you, whatever you want. So it's going to make life a lot easier rather than looking at it. You know. A green or whatever but if you have multiple links on here which I'm going to show you how to do uh, the radio is going to uh, pick whatever color it wants uh, some random colors so it gives you kind of a chance to do so okay uh, this is device label so you can see it's labeled over here so you could show it not show it okay we'll cover this here in a minute and then this kind of gives us a quick help all right this is uh, this is zoom in, zoom out, and then this is uh, to uh, center, if you will, on your devices. So you have multiple devices. It's going to uh, center um, on the base station or around them. Okay, so let me kind of expand out, if you will. All right, so look at the map itself. So within the map, uh, you could do various things. All right, so you could, let's say, drag and drop. So let's just say here's an endpoint B. We could left click, drag it, and put it to wherever we want. And then you could see, because this is a quick bridge, it's um, the azimuth, the degrees in which it's pointing, is going to directly go towards it. Right? You could do the exact same thing to, uh, to the endpoint A. You could see we're going to drag it and... It's going to automatically align itself, point itself towards endpoint B. 
uh, it runs a little bit different when you have a uh, when you have a base station uh, uh, point to multipoint okay so let's go ahead and take a look on this side right here so again so this is just the device name you could name it whatever you want okay. in this case we'll just leave it as endpoint a here's a SKU. Uh, here is the azimuth so in this particular case when you move this around you can kind of see how the how the degrees change in which direction it's pointing okay we have our antenna gain uh, again because this is a built-in uh, antenna again uh, stays okay? it is it's something you cannot change a radio mode uh, you could have ingle either single stream or dual stream uh, you could do MIMO in this case it's uh, two by two but if we go to single you could see we could have either two by two or one, uh, one by one All right, so let's go ahead and do well, we have our noise factor so if you know our, if you know you're in a noise environment you could go ahead and kind of calculate that in All right. you have your latitude and longitude okay. so um, we already know it's going to go basically go off by either uh, metric or imperial okay let's go back here okay so this is our altitude in in feet okay and we have the uh, elevation I'm going to touch on elevation here uh, shortly after go to link details so on uh, endpoint B once you click down you can see it's gonna basically give us the exact same information and okay, I can kind of see here it tells us the uh, the distance between our radios okay so if we would drag this guy over here, you can kind of see that it 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 moves the distance. Okay? So again, here is our our azimuth is over here. Okay, and elevation again is something I'm gonna is something I'm gonna cover. Okay, now so let's go ahead and check out the link details. All right, so you can see here is our uh, path profile. Okay, in this particular case, we're kind of, uh, we are going up, so it's kind of pretty, it's pretty uh, steep. All right, so let's see here, let's kind of make it, maybe make it a bit flatter. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's see, let's go, okay, over here. So you can kind of see it's, uh, it, it changes with the terrain. So what we could do here is we could change the antenna height okay so let's just say if we make this uh, 35 okay and then we change this to 35 you could see that our direct line of sight and our uh, Fresnel zone then they're, they're not they are pretty clear of anything right and we are uh, we have a pretty good line of sight okay so once we click back in the map, you, know, you can kind of see that our elevation in this particular case is still zero because we're pretty flat. Now, if you would have a, um, let's just say a number there other than zero. So let's just say you would have a, um, like a, a five. So that means that you have a, a, a down tilt to that particular radio. And if you have a, negative number like a negative five that means you have an up tilt on that particular uh, radio so let's go ahead and go over uh, this right here so what we are looking at here is you could kind of this is our endpoint b okay so here is uh, our distance all right distance is uh, over uh, three quarters of a mile there is our expected throughput here's our modulation here is our uh, free space loss. Okay, here is our transmit power on both sides. Here is our transmit uh, uh, power control TPC, our ERP, okay, our receive se uh, sensitivity on both ends, our uh, RSL, we have our fade margin on both ends, uh, we have our uh, availability, and then we have our signal to noise ratio. Okay. 
So um, one of the other things that we could do here is we could add obstacles. Okay, so you could either add ob obstacle by clicking plus. Okay, and you could just do the obstacle name, uh, height, distance, uh, or the length. Or you could just kind of maneuver, kind of point where you want to be, and there's an obstacle, just left click. And this is going to come up. So we could call you a tree. And let's just say it's a, uh, I don't know, this argument's sake, it's a 45-foot tree. And it's about, let's see here, foot. So we could just add it, and then, as you can see, yes, I know, pretty big tree. But so here we know that we have an obstacle, and you could see that it is directly in the line of sight, uh, both uh, uh visual line of sight and throughout Fennel Zone. So in this particular case, we have to come up here and in this case, let's see, just kind of lower it uh, higher. Let's see, let's do 60 and then there we go. So, and, and you could just kind of keep on going and going and you could kind of see it's down here. It's going to tell you all the, basically all the information, uh, the distance between, uh, uh, from and point B. Okay, so that is uh, uh, that's how you use this section, and, and it is a, a, a pretty good tool. So one of the things that uh, I want to do want to cover is let me go back to map. Now we cannot do this in a quick bridge because a quick bridge is point to point. Now what happens if I want to uh, add a point to multi point? Well, I have different. Uh, uh, links that I want to add to to my calculator. So, what how to do that is we're just going to click on report and we're going to click new report and we're going to click save. Right? Now, if you do not want to save that particular report, just click no, and it's just going to start from the beginning. So, in this case, this just going to have to do. Let's do a point to point to multi point imperial decimal uh, FCC and let's leave you at 58 uh, let's see here we do 40 megahertz and let's see in this particular case we're going to do point to multi point okay? and it, it goes uh, the information is basically the same we have a BS9 which has a 16 dBi antenna but if we go down to a MP10100 BSC, you could see that we could add an antenna. So just as we did before, in this case, let's just kind of make life simple. We're just going to add a BS9 uh, throughput. Again, it's going to, let's just say 300, and then we calculate. Okay. Same information as we've seen before. Okay. We go to map. Now, you can kind of see how it gives us our antenna, uh, our antenna pattern, okay? Um, so the way that we could add clients first is we could come down here, we could add a client, right? client name, we'll just call it SU1, the SKU, uh, let's see, it's just a 10150 SUR, 10 again, latitude and longitude, and we just click add. And so you can see it's just going to put it wherever where we tell it to. What we could also do is uh, left click and then just drag it. Okay. Now we could continue doing that, or we could come anywhere in the uh, in the color within the antenna pattern. We could right click and then we this will pop up. So now we just do SU two. And let's say that this guy is going to be a CPE, and then we click Add. And then again, we could put him exactly where we want him. Now, you can kind of see here on this side, we can, now we could switch between SU1, SU2, and we also have the base station. Now, as mentioned before, uh, in a quick bridge, you cannot change the azimuth. The way that you change the uh, azimuth is by just dragging it. Right? In this particular case, if you drag it, it's not going to, um, uh, the subscribers are not going to automatically kind of pop to it, if you will. And here, you just kind of come in and see, whichever direction you go, 
this is the way we change our azimuth. So if I, let's see here. I go out, uh, zoom in. So you can kind of see that we could just kind of change our, our azimuth, our degrees kind of pointing to exactly which direction they should be. Now, if we look at the SUs, uh, you can see that they are automatically, everything's automatically populated, okay? Uh, we could uh, delete it, we could move to, S, uh, to the BSU. You could also see it also tells us the distance between the two. So if we click on this guy over here, it automatically tells us the distance. We can move him to over here. You can see that, the, that it tells us the distance as well, okay? So now we could kind of keep on, we could uh, keep on going and going, right? and we could add uh, more subscribers. Uh, let's see here, we can do SU3. Now let's go ahead and select a SUA, uh, an XP in this case. Uh, now uh, we have an access point in there as well. Now we looking for a specific antenna, so let's just do a 60 degree sector, we do add, it's gonna put it here, and then we just kinda of drag it. Then of course you could also always come in and you could enter a specific uh, latitude or longitude. Okay, so, um, now remember we have two of these now, right? We have a, uh, we have a, a quick bridge link and we also have this point to multipoint link. Right, so this the way that you switch between them is actually up here. Right, when you have a pull down, you could see that we have a point to point demo, and then we have a point to multi point. So if I switch here, it's going to ask us to save again. If you select no, it's not going to. It's just going to delete what you've done. Click save. Right, now it's going to automatically go back to our original. I right, the point to point. Now we could switch back between point uh, point to multi point. Okay, now uh, the same thing for also for here, okay, uh, as we talked about the profile, but because we have multiple subscribers, you could see that we could select a specific subscriber and we could go down here and we could make all the specific changes that we need per, uh, per subscriber. And then the, obviously the, uh, the calculator is going to calculate all the information for you. So... There is one other way that we could go ahead and uh, add uh, locations, if you will. So you have a search box, okay? So let's just say that we got something specific. Let's just say we're going to do Las Vegas. All right, so let's just do Las Vegas. All right, so what we're going to end up doing is we're, let's just say we're going to come in here. All right, and we're going to right-click. And we're going to hit move BSU here. So remember, it's going to uh, generically put the BSU in uh, in California. Okay? So if you know the location or if you have a specific address that you want to put it in, when you create this, just go ahead and do that. Now, yes, that's the reason why for the latitude and longitude, but you could go ahead and just leave everything at default, come here, put in whatever address you want, okay? Right-click and then do, this is going to pop up, and then if you do move to BSU, uh, it's going to pop here. Now, the downside would be, depending on where our radios are, uh, we would have to go back here. But what you really need to do is, once you have your subscribers, all right, in this particular case, uh, you don't have to kind of do the way that I did. You could just put the address, do the base stations, uh, the base station add in, then you could add your subscribers. But I'm showing there's a different way. Let's just say if you want to move your subscribers as well, you could just uh, zoom in. Okay, you could go uh, left click and then do move to be a ba uh, move to base station. Okay, so now we could kind of now we can move it to wherever we want. All right. Let's see, and then this kind of zooms out, and then we could zoom back in. And then we could select this guy and then move to base station, zoom all the way out, and then move to base station. So 
now you could zoom in okay in this particular case uh, it's going to be control and then your mouse if it doesn't work where you could use your plus or minus and then we could go ahead and manipulate our satellites to wherever we want in this uh, in the pattern okay. so as mentioned before we could go ahead and select here we could uh, do a little click this and then we could change it to whatever color we want let's say we want it to be nice and green click OK now it's green now I'm going to show you why this uh, why this uh, matters here in a minute okay so what I'm going to end up doing is uh, I'm actually going to move everything back okay so uh, we put everything back the way it was so one of the major things that uh, that we could do here is let's go ahead and select our radio this thing back to green select green okay so now here's our link is green so let's just say you have multiple radios kind of going left right uh, multiple hops and things like that and you just want to get a clear picture as to what's going on all right one of the easiest ways to do that is going to be click on network save so let's say that we have this is our um, po uh, point to point this is our backhaul link and it's going into this building over here and now we're feeding this point to multi-point link hey you could also have a link going this way and in this way so uh, as long as you just create new uh, new reports again just report new and just kind of keep on going and going and going it's going to do the exact same thing and then you could just select whichever one you want manipulate it and then definitely make sure that you save it and then uh, and then go from there okay so now after we have done uh, after we've finished we could go ahead and click here and then we could go and save okay or we could uh, save the project and it's just going to save it in a um, uh, let's see here save and it's going to save it onto this project name okay we could go here and save it as okay we could save it as a profile and then it'll just look like this okay so when you want to reopen it you just go to that file double click it and then it should it will open okay so let's go ahead and save our project to an excel spreadsheet Okay, you're going to see this uh, menu pop up. Uh, so you'll be able to select all. You'll be able to do just one. Uh, if you have multiple, you know, say five, you'll be able to do three out of the five, two out of five. Okay, uh, whatever you want, go ahead and click OK. Uh, download it to a specific location. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to click OK. Uh, mind you, this is going to take some time. Uh, the more projects you have, the longer it's going to take. Okay, so uh, after it's complete, you should see this. If you did not see this, uh, then maybe something went wrong, but this is what you're looking for, right? Go ahead and click OK. So in my case, I did put in the desktop, but uh, to save time, I created a folder. Uh, so you could see what it does. It actually creates two separate reports, okay, because uh, you could only uh, save so much. So in this case, here's our point-to-point -point demo okay and um, you kind of see the uh, I'll show both of them but the both of them are going to show the exact same thing so uh, we discussed that uh, the header right uh, the header and the footer so that's where those go you have a quick summary of basically all the information that we put in there's that throughput chart right here's a link view so it's just a quick look at what we were uh, what we saw before here is information about both endpoint A and B, okay? Uh, if we have uh, cable information, uh, if this was a 10100 uh, with an external antenna, you see all that info. Here's our link distance, uh, uh, free space loss. You have latitude, longitude, azimuth, and so on, okay? Uh, here is our path profile. And down here is again just another form, uh, another picture of the link. And then down here is network. So as you could see here, we actually have both. 
we have the QB link and we have a point to multipoint link as well. Okay, so now if we go ahead and open up a point to multipoint, you can see that the information is going to be the same, but now we have tabs for all of the subscribers that we created. So the sector view is going to give us the same info as before. Now you could see, and so here's the base station to SC1 specifically, right, to uh, base station to SU2, and so on, base station to SU3. And here now again, the network is just going to show what we've uh, what we talked about before. It's just going to give us a, a quick view of what the overall network looks like. Or what you could do is you could also export it as a KMZ file, mm -hmm. yeah, which is of course a uh, a Google Earth file. All right, and then when you're going to reopen it, it's going to open Google Earth. Okay, so now that we have uh, the KMZ file open, you can see uh, now it's, of course, in Google Earth. And you can also see, like, the colors. Those are the same colors that we selected because, again, it's uh, going through, uh, through Google Earth. But in this case, it's red and the green is kind of hard to see. But um, so that's basically what that looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can um, import a file from Google Earth, a KML file. So it's uh, um, a few steps. So we're going to have to do a new project. Uh, let's just go ahead and project name. All right, so if we click on report, we could, we could see again Excel and KML. So what it's looking for is a KML file. What we need to do is go ahead and uh, open Google Earth. Okay, and we, what we're going to do is go to temporary places, select, right click, do add, and then place mark. Okay, so uh, one of the things we need to do here is uh, kind of fairly simple. So we're going to name it. So in this particular case, we're going to do point to point, and we're just going to do type A. All right, and we're going to move it to wherever, wherever we want. So let's just say over here. All right. So there are certain steps that we need to follow, especially we need to type in descriptions. So I'm going to open up the manual, okay? And as you can see here, there's uh, radio types, okay? So it's either going to be a point-to-point -point or a point-to-multipoint, okay? And it's also going to ask for a device type. Now, you don't need to do a device type, but if, it, but if you do, it's, uh, it's going to look something similar like this. But if you don't, it's going to default to a um, point-to-multipoint point is going to be a 10150 BS9. And then a quick bridge is going to be a, uh, an, a QB 10150. Okay, so in our particular case, we're going to do a, just the radio type. Uh, it's going to be point-to-point. So we're going to go back to here, right, and I already wrote it out, and we're just going to paste it. So that's what it's going to look like. All right. Next thing we need to do is we need to click on the altitude, okay, and we need to tell them how high in the, uh, the radio is going to be. So we're going to select absolute, and you're going to uh, select extent to ground, and then we're going to put down uh, whatever it is, let's say two meters. Okay, I'm going to click here, and then we're going to click here again, and we're going to click, um, we're going to select our B radio. Right, so we're going to add it, we're going to do B, and let's just say we're going to go across the freeway, we're going to go here, and we're going to do the exact same thing. All right, we're going to do absolute, extend, and then and two, all right, and we're going to click OK. So there's our link. So last we got to save it again we have to save this as a KML file so we're going to right click here we're going to do uh, save places as all right we're going to select KML all right, let's just do temporary places for now and save that is that so now we're going to go back to the calculator we're going to do report uh, create from KML Right. And we're going to do point it towards temporary places. Uh, click. So you might see this. This is basically saying that we did not enter the, the correct product. 
name in there with the SKU. So if you have that in there, it's uh, this is not going to pop up, so that's not a problem. So let's close this out. As you can see, it's going to just kind of give us the a general overview. Right, now you're going to have to come in here, and you're going to have to select all the info that you want because it does does not know your domain, does not know your frequency band or your channel, things like that. So you're just going to have to come in here manually, set that, right, and hit calculate. And as you can see, when we click on the map, it mapped it out for us completely exactly where we uh, where we were looking at Google Earth okay and then from then on you could just go ahead and, and save your project uh, again as um, as before uh, we could again export it to Excel exit um, save it as a KMZ file so next time you could just actually open it up in Google Earth Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and cover how to uh, import um, information from an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, now there's uh, two uh, different ways that you could do it. There's one where it's just a, a single, uh, let's just say link, a point to point or a point to multi point. Uh, as an example, we have uh, here is a point to multi point. Okay, and that's basically all it is. There's no additional point to points or anything like that. Okay, and then we also have the option to do uh, multiple. So in this particular case, we have the point to uh, point to multi point. You can see here is the base station, the subscribers, and down here in the second tab, we also have a point to point. Okay, so uh, there's there's kind of different ways of how to uh, how to do that, and I'm gonna uh, cover uh, both ways. Okay, but but let me go ahead and cover what is actually required within uh, within the sheets. Okay, so it's got to be a Excel spreadsheet here. So there's a slight difference between what we see in the uh, in the multiple compared to the uh, just the single. Okay. So in the multiple, you will have uh, three tabs. You should have a general, sheet one, and sheet two. In the general, it's going to be, you're going to have this information here, units, terrain, climate, and then the domain, okay, the regulatory domain. And so you can kind of see here, so here's the units. It tells you what, what it's set to. All right, so the units is one metric to imperial. So we did metric. There's the terrain. Okay, and here is average, here's the climate, and then here's the, uh, the regulatory domain. In this case, we're using Etsy or uh, Europe. Okay, so, uh, so these are the parameters, and up here is what we want it to, to use. All right, so when we click over to the uh, point to multi point, and, and mind you, they're going to be the exact same thing, the same info. Okay. What you do need is this information up top. Number one, it has to be either a PMP, which is point to multi point, or like in here, a, a PTP for point to point. Okay, so this has to be this way. Here's the latitude, longitude, the skew, antenna height, and the antenna CPN. The only time the antenna CPN is used is when you have uh, radios like here we have a uh, 10100B uh, BSU which needs an external antenna and then a uh, 10100SU okay SUA which needs external antenna so what happens is that if you do not put a antenna CPN or part number in here okay the calculator is automatically going to put a 22 dBi flat panel in there Right. So basically, it looks at uh, it looks at the skew, okay, and it's going to say, okay, well, I don't have anything here, so I'm going to put in a 22. Right. Now the skew is also optional. Okay. So what uh, what that's going to happen is it's going to kind of fill itself in, meaning that if you don't do not put a skew in, okay, the first radio always has to be the base station. Okay, and then each radio after that has to be a subscriber. And these are just arbitrary names. You could name them whatever you want. You know, farm one, farm two, whatever. 
Okay, but the first one, uh, the first one always has to be a base station. So if you do not put anything in the SKU, it's going to automatically default to a uh, MP uh, ten one fifty BS nine. Okay, and everything after that, the subscribers, it's going to automatically uh, default to a ten one fifty SUR subscriber with the built-in antenna. Okay, uh, the same thing for a um, a quick bridge, okay? Um, the first one has to be an A, the other one has to be a B, but if you do not put anything in the SKU, it will automatically uh, default to a QB10150-LNK, which is just the link. Um, and then, of course, you have your an antenna height, okay? Now, the antenna height could be, um, in this case, it could be either metric or imperial. In this case, we, uh, we picked imperial. It's going to be, we, we picked metric. So it's just going to go off metric. Uh, there's going to be a slight difference when you use a single because I'll show you that it doesn't have any of these fields. Okay, so if we switch over to a single, you can see that there's only one sheet. Okay, and we don't have the general here. So you can see the information is basically the same. Okay, so antenna height is going to go off by what the calculator is set to. Okay, so um, if you recall, we had that option where you could set it to either imperial or, or metric. That's what it's going to go off by when you generate. And I'll go ahead and show, go ahead and show that as well. Okay, so uh, to load these, there are two separate ways uh, for each one. It's in, it's in two different locations. To load the calculator with multiple radios, Okay, you got to have to go to project and you have to do create project from Excel. All right, in this case, we're just going to do multiple select okay. and it's going to do work in progress. Okay, now uh, remember when I mentioned that you have the option to do uh, metric imperial, so we already told it, but you could still change it because it already has that information. Okay. So what you can see here, it says point to point, okay? Up here, because we have actually have separate links, we have a point to point, a point to multipoint. You also have this pull down and you have this link. Now we could change this, okay? Remember, so we could do this as a point to point, okay? And we could come down here and then we could select, we do save and then we select this one as uh, point Let's see here, point to multipoint, okay? And then we do all this information, okay? And then we do calculate. Let's see here, okay, I forgot it has to be four characters or, or more. All right, so we do calculate. So in this particular case, you can kind of see that, all right, well, here are our radios, okay? And then all, all the information is, is here. I pull this down, and then it'll it'll tell us all the information that we covered before. Okay, link details, and as you can see, we already put the the height information is is there uh, for that particular SU. Okay, if we go to the base station and we go to link details, all the information is there that we initially discussed. All right, so that is how you do. Uh, a project with multiple links. Okay, now, um, what happens if you just want to do one link, uh, which is going to be the single one? So how you do that is, uh, so we're going to project, and we're uh, we're not going to save it. We're just going to close it. All right. So what we need to do is we need to click on project, new project. Right, we're going to name it whatever we want. So just keep it as project name. We're going to report, and now we're going to go to create report from Excel. All right? And then we're just going to do our single open. And then, okay, so we know it's a point to multipoint. As you can see, there's only one. Again, we could rename it whatever we want. We calculate. Okay, and here is our here is our link. Okay, and link details, again, there's all the information that we uh, entered before, okay? Now, I mentioned, um, as, let's see, over here, 
you can see we have the antenna height. Okay, remember I mentioned about the antenna height, especially on the single. It's going to go off by here, so because it's going to take you to the original calculate uh, screen. This is where it's going to take you before you hit calculate. So you're going to have to select whichever one you want, and then it's going to go off by that number that you put in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and then again, here's our all our information that we wanted, and uh, and then that is uh, how we import information from uh, an Excel spreadsheet. All right, lastly, so let's go ahead and take a look at the quick projects. So the quick projects is really used for just a quick glance if you just want to know what the link is going to look like uh, using distance, um, mileage. Uh, you don't have to put coordinates in. It's just going to give you basic info. And so as you can see, it's just the same thing as we, we talked about your terrain, your uh, domain, your, your bands, your channel size, your point-to-point, point-to-multipoint. You can see you have all the radios here. Okay, your climate. Uh, you can see here because it's a quick bridge, ten one fifty. You have the antenna gain where you put in here, and then if you do a like ten one hundred, you could put the antenna type in here, um, and so on. So let me go ahead and do this, and then of course our average throughput, which is based on the channel size. So once we do a calculate, kind of see that that's all it is. We have the uh, the name and point name. You just go ahead and to, uh, type that in okay the antenna type is integrated the gain here's our mileage so we could put in let's see 10 miles and you can see how our uh, rsl changes and then you have your maximum throughput and then your expected throughput okay? so that's basically uh, uh what it is it's to, again it's just a quick tool uh for you to get uh, it, just an idea of what the link is going to look like to learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.